The Climate Prediction Center is still persisting on the idea that we could see tropical cyclone development right over the main development region and even as far west as the Caribbean islands where we do see for week two, um, the week beginning of August 16th, we do see a pretty large area where tropical cyclone development is possible and for week three, it extends a little bit further westward closer to the Caribbean islands which is only a concern not only for the Caribbean but the United States potentially in the more long-term future so we're going to take a look at the computer models see if um, these next few trouble ways will have a good possibility of developing and determine what factors will uh, play a role in determining if we're going to see a tropical storm over the main development region Taking a look at the European models forecast when it comes to the possibility of a tropical cyclone um, moving through the Atlantic, we do see that um, there is a small chance right now over, um, just over Puerto Rico, the Lesser Antilles as well, and a little bit further eastward of that where we do see anywhere between a 5 to a 20% chance of tropical cyclone development between the days of August 14th and August 21st. And this is concerning because it does outline an area that does that could um, make um, the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico at risk for a tropical cyclone impacting you guys. And while the chance is currently low, we have to keep in mind that with tropical cyclones in the more long-term future, the chance is typically always lower than let's say if um, the forecast were um, was in the more short term future when there's more confidence with the forecast so there is a possibility we could easily see this chance increase over the next several days if the European model continues to persist on the idea that it wants to develop a tropical storm and even moving beyond the week ending um, August 21st we do see the area extends even more to much of the northern Atlantic where there's a, a much higher and larger um, possibility of a tropical cyclone developing oh, um, and we do see that even going into the early portion of September it extends even more so the next couple of weeks are definitely gonna be something that we're gonna need to closely monitor especially since the European model has been persisting on the idea that multiple tropical waves should come off the West African coast let me show you guys what the European model is forecasting right now Actually, just before I show you guys the European model, let's first take a look at the water vapor imagery. And this is a tropical wave we're going to closely monitor over the next several days as it should pretty much be the beginning of an influx of convective activity moving into the main development region that will begin the trend of multiple tropical waves coming off the west african coast which all could have the possibility of developing into a tropical cyclone we see another tropical wave just to the east of this tropical wave that should come off the african coast as early as tomorrow and we do see at least the environment early on is fairly moist but it's going to need to deal with dry air a little bit further westward and hopefully it sticks around um, long enough for um, this tropical wave not to have a great chance of developing but it still has yet to be seen. Taking a look at the relative humidity forecast provided from the European model, we do see that we're going to see a pretty large area of convective activity extending off the West African coast. And once this tropical wave finally comes off the West African coast, um, we do see a well-defined low pressure system. But the good news is that, at least for now, the European model is forecasting that this initial tropical wave should fizzle out thanks to the amount of dry air that's to the west of it. We're seeing a strong northeasterly flow that's forcing a lot of the more stable air from the Saharan desert as well as portions of Europe further southward into the main development region which could be the key factor that um, could completely diminish the possibility of tropical cyclone development in the main development region however despite the amount of dry air the European model still expects a lot of well, I wouldn't say well defined, but it does so identify a small area of a lower pressure right over the main development region. But I'll say at least for this first tropical wave, it's more likely that the dry air will just be too much for it to handle. But it becomes a different story when we, when we take a look at the second tropical wave that should come off the West African coast right around 
the Tuesday time frame and there's a lot more convective activity you see with this tropical wave and we do see the low pressure is very well defined and we do see the millibar pressure drops as low as a thousand five millibars and another thing too to point out with this um, specific tropical wave is that it's definitely a lot more compact we don't see a very in as elongated of an area of moisture anymore and we do see it has its own little um, small core um, especially on the northeastern portion of this storm while it's definitely um, a low while it's definitely very lopsided to intensify very rapidly the dry air would be a little bit too much for this to handle if it wants to intensify a little bit more it, it'll need um it, it's definitely going to need some more moisture on all sides of, of this low pressure system to have a higher chance of rapidly intensifying but despite the dry air the european model still wants to develop nearly or if not a uh, tropical disturbance that's considered chop, um, a tropical storm um, where we do see the millibar pressure is around a thousand five millibars which could be considered um, a storm um, that would be that would be um, a tropical storm and moving forward when we do see it sort of maintains its strength despite the amount of dry air so there's only an enhanced risk of a tropical storm developing right over this area however the good news is, is is that with this latest run the european model wanted to take a track further northward which would certainly be good news because the, um if it were to take a track further southward that would put more of the caribbean islands at risk but since it'll move northward not only would it be more likely to miss the caribbean islands but it'll be uh, of course far more likely it'll miss um any sort of landmass entirely because when we see a tropical cyclone move this far up north it's very difficult for it to, to make it all the way to the west to potentially reach the united states for um um before it um gets deterred by a trough that pretty much just steers it out to sea it's very difficult that a tropical cycle makes that full journey um to make landfall towards the u uh, um, towards the united states it has happened before um one of the um big um one of the big recent tropical cyclones um that um took a track very far northward but still made landfall in the united states was hurricane florence back in 20 18 but consider that tropical cyclone an anomaly rather than the rule so if this tropical cyclone were to move as far north as what the european model is currently suggesting then that would certainly be good news because then it's pretty much unlikely to impact any sort of land mass um which is definitely the best case scenario even though it would be tropical storm status if it moves northward it wouldn't bring much in terms of land impact but um if we were to shift a little bit further eastward we do see another tropical wave comes off the west african coast right around sunday august 20th which is definitely another tropical wave we're gonna need to pay close attention to as i do expect over the next several weeks I expect a lot more tropical waves move over the main development region as well, of course we're entering the more active part of the hurricane season and this is the most um, active area of the hurricane season so expect multiple tropical waves and um, there could be at least potentially one within maybe the next week or two that could be our next big tropical cyclone I'll keep you guys updated once um, we um, once we get more confidence with the forecast but we do see the european model wants to develop a tropical storm ma mainly because there's plenty of um moisture as well as a light amount of wind shear despite the amount of dry air let me show you guys the european models forecast when it comes to the amount of wind shear so here's the forecasted amount of wind shear provided from the european model and we do see that over the main development region at least over a small portion the wind shear should be relatively light while the wind shear is strong just to the north and south of these tropical waves at least over these tropical waves the wind shear will be very light because there's going to be a strong upper level high located over on um, these tropical waves which could be concerning because if there's a strong enough upper level high over 
on these tropical waves and that would create more uh, better outflow for this storm to allow the air molecules up along the upper levels to move um to pretty much move out and allow more air to lift which means that the pressure would lower along the surface and that would increase the wind speed if we were to see a good amount of outflow like we're seeing right here in the european model scenario and the european model has been persisting on this idea over the past several days where it expects the tropical waves to move over a small area where the wind shear is very light and the wind shear just outside of it is very strong which means that it'll have a good outflow so i am so i will say that i'm getting a high amount of confidence i this on um, these tropical waves should be at least okay when it comes to the amount of wind shear over it to where it'll be conducive enough for development really the key thing we're gonna pay close attention to over the next several days is the amount of dry air because that will be pretty much the biggest factor um or potentially the biggest achilles heel that would prevent this storm from developing because when it comes to the amount of wind shear it seems like it's going to be light enough um for this to uh, potentially have a chance and we do see it continue um even as the storm continues ahead further northward but if it were to move further northward we could see the wind shear could become a little bit um stronger for this storm to handle but by that point it'll it won't impact land most likely anyway so it won't really matter but it's still at least something to be aware of as this continues ahead further westward so most likely the wind shear will be light the the key thing we're gonna pay close attention to is the amount of dry air of course we're gonna also need to pay close attention to the exact trajectory of these next few tropical waves because if we were to see this ridge become a little bit stronger then we could see our next tropical wave take a track further southward and that would force um and that could potentially bring impacts to the caribbean islands however we're seeing just enough troughing and just enough a weakness in ridging as we approach saturday august 19th where this tropical wave is able to take a track further northward which would certainly be good news we're gonna need to see how power this trough is and we won't really um determine and we won't really see how powerful it is until maybe the middle of next week once this is right around the northeast because um if this trough ends up being weaker than expected then expect a stronger ridge and expect a track further southward which will definitely be much more concerning gun definitely pay very close attention to this trough as it continues ahead further eastward right now the european model is expecting the, the trough to be strong enough and dig down far south enough to pull this shovel away but the track forecast is far from certain at this time so definitely pay close attention to this over the next several days the GFS model is still persisting on its scenario that it's going to take a, that the dry air is just going to be too much for these next few tropical waves to handle. However, what's interesting is that the GFS model as of the recent runs has been forecasting more moisture than initially anticipated, which could be a, a key trend we're going to pay close attention to over the next several runs because if it continues and that could mean that the gfs would lean a little bit more to what the european model been stating this whole time which it would definitely be the more concerning scenario because the european model is a lot more favorable um when it comes to tropical cyclone development by next week um so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to this and now we see a well-defined low pressure system by um by next week in the gfs model scenario which wasn't there in the previous few days if this trend continues and i'd definitely lean more to what the european model is stating and even if the gfs model still persists on this idea of not developing a tropical cyclone i'd still a little bit i'll still lean a little bit more to the european model since it's been a more reliable model um this hurricane season but don't completely rule out the gfs model either because it's still a reliable model but point is is that I'll say that tropical cyclone development is certainly possible by next week and the Caribbean islands should at least be aware of this as a couple of powerful tropical waves are inevitably going to move into the main development region um, and potentially develop. These are what the ensemble members of the GFS model are forecasting at this time and we do see the, um, there's quite a few of the ensemble members wanting to develop a tropical storm just off the west african coast so even though the main gfs model isn't necessarily agreeing that a tropical storm will form the ensemble members are showing a different story which shows that 
the chance certainly exists by next week and it's still too certain to say whether the chance is high or low but i'll keep you guys updated so in terms of my general forecast regarding the possibility of Chalgo Storm Emily by next week, um, I will say the chance is certainly um, 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 enhanced um, next week. We do have a, a couple of po uh, powerful tropical waves coming off the West African coast and the European model is now developing a tropical storm. So the chance has slightly risen compared to the past few days, but at least stay tuned for more updates once we get more certainty with the forecast. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.